Kia ora koutou. This video is going to go through one of the vectors questions from the November 2022 set of papers. So I'm starting with paper 32. So this question is quite easy um, and not that much work if you do it one way, but I'm also going to teach it a second way, not so much for what you need to do in this question, but to show you some things that could be useful in other places. So let's just read through the whole thing first. So relative to the origin, we're given three points and they've got these position vectors. So OA, OB and OC. The first thing we need to do is we need to find the cosine of angle BAC and we're told to use the scalar product to do it, which is pretty obvious. Um, so I think that's a very easy four marks. And then the next thing that we've got to do is to find the area of triangle ABC. And we have to give our answer in a simplified exact form. So this is the part where there are two different ways to do it. And if you think about finding the area of the triangle, that should tell you what those two different ways are going to be. The first way is using, let me just change the stylus. The first way is using the formula, the area of a triangle is equal to a half AB sine C, right? That's the one that we learn at level two. And the second way to find the area of the triangle is using half the base times the height, which is what we used to use back in year nine. And um, this way is the easy way, although there's one little thing that you've got to see. This is the really quite messy way, but still useful for other methods. All right, so let's um, get into it. So pause the video and see how far you can get with both of those questions and give them a go. Make sure you do some really good diagrams of what you're trying to find at each step. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is that we need to find the cosine of angle BAC. So let's draw a picture of what that angle is. So A is the vertex here, and that means that we can put B here and C here. So it's really important when we're doing this that we think about the vector going from B to A and the vector going from C to A. We want to have the two vectors either both going in to the vertex, or it's fine if you prefer to think about it as both of them going out. The mistake that is really easy to make is to have this one going in, but to have this one going out, which means that they're not going to meet. And if you do that, everything will get screwed up. So I recommend that you always start with drawing a picture of, of what you're doing first up. Right, let's just get rid of that mess before we get going. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to find the vector from B to A and the vector from C to A. So vector BA is OA minus OB, which gives me, um, so working with these vectors up here, um, OA minus AB, OB will be, what have I got? Um, have I done this backwards when I've done this? Let me just check. BA, OA, so it's 1 minus 3, let's see, 1 minus 3, and then it's 3 minus 1, and then it's 1 minus 2. Right, so that gives me negative 2, 2, and negative 1. So that's BA. Next up we've got um, CA, which is OA minus OC. And that gives me um, 1 minus 5, 3 minus 3, and negative 1 minus 2. Now I'm just going to check that I've got that right. I think that's not quite right, is it? That should be a 1 there. Right, so it's well worth checking this at this stage before you go ahead and make a, a small mistake here, because it's going to stuff up everything. So OA was 1, 3, 1. Yep, that's right. And then OC was 5, 3 negative 2, so that needs to be a plus. Okay, what does that give me? Well, I get negative 4, 0, and positive 3. Now, we can find the dot product. Cos theta is going to be the dot product of BA dot CA divided by the magnitudes of those two things. All right, so the dot product here is um, 8 plus 0, minus 3. All right, so we've done dot product. Go watch a, a revision video on dot product if you've forgotten it. Divided by the magnitude. So the magnitude of the first vector is 4 plus 4 plus 1, and the magnitude of the second one is 16 plus 0 plus 9. So that gives me 5 divided by the square root of 9 
times the square root of 25, which gives me one third. So we've got to cos of theta is equal to one third. Now I could go ahead and get um, an approximate value for theta from that, but I'm not asked for that. And it's actually going to put me on a wrong pathway for the next bit. So we're asked to find the cosine of angle BAC, and we've done that. So that's four marks. Now, the reason why I say not to do that is if you look at the next part of the problem, we need to give our answer in a simplified exact form. So let's um, remember the first way, the year 12 or level 2 way, to find the area of a triangle. And see, first of all, let's draw the triangle. So we've got A here, and we've got B here, and we've got C here. But we know the length of AB is 3, and we know the length of AC is 5, and we've got some angle in here. So to find the area, it's going to be a half times 3 times 5 times sine theta. But we haven't worked out exactly what theta is, and we want to get an exact value for it. So we've done this quite a few times in different situations, and if you're doing scholarship calculus, we've especially done it quite a bit there. I'm going to use a little diagram to do Pythagoras and back out what sine of theta is. All right, so if we um, just plonk down our diagram, so here's a right angle triangle, this is theta, this side length is 1, this is definitely not to scale, I've just realised that, that's 1, and that length is 3, right, because that's giving me so katoa adjacent over hypotenuse, and that means that this side length here will have length 3 squared minus 1 squared, which is the square root of 8, which I can write as 2 root 2. And that means that I can easily find sine of theta, right? So sine of theta will be 2 root 2 over 3. So the area of the triangle, and this is why I reckon this is a really easy question if you spot this, is just equal to this. And we can clean all of that up. The 2 simplify, the 3 simplify, and I'm left with the area is equal to 5 root 2, and I'll just say units squared. Right, so that's method one. Now I want to go on to show you the other way that we could do this. Now this is a ton more work, so but please keep watching because it's very good revision of the useful skill of being able to find where a point, where we get a perpendicular line thing going on. Right, so let's go all the way up to the question. Um, hence find the area of triangle ABC. I'm going to do that now using half the base times the height. So let's draw my triangle again, and this time we'll label it, we've got A, B, and C, but we're going to mark on this point here, X. Now X is special because it's going to make the length AX perpendicular to BC. So where's X? Well, we need to do a little bit of work to find this, and as I said, tons of extra work. Let's first of all find um, vector BC. We know that we're going to need this because we're going to do half the base times the height. So vector BC is easily found. It's 5, 3, 2, minus 3, sorry, 5, 3, negative 2, minus 3, 1, 2, which gives me 2, 2, negative 4. And the length of that vector will be the square root of 4 plus 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 24. And I can simplify that third and get 2 root 6. Okay, now what about this point x? How do we find it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the equation of the line through b and c, and we know that x is on that line, and it's going to have some particular lambda value. And then we're going to figure out where that point is, and then we're going to figure out ax. Okay, so the line through BC is R, well it has a starting point of um, OB, which is 3, 1, 2, plus lambda times 2, 2, negative 4. Now we know that X is on that line, so we're just writing that now as 3 plus 2 lambda, 1 plus 2 lambda, 2 minus 4 lambda. And we know that OA is equal to 1, 3, 1. 
So that means that, just drawing this in again, here's x, and here's a, and here's b. So we know that at point x, we must have that the angle here is 0. Let's work out what ax is. Well, ax goes from a to x. So it's ox minus oa, which is 3 plus 2 lambda, 1 plus 2 lambda, 2 minus 4 lambda, right, so that's coming from up here, minus 1, minus 3, minus 1. So the vector from a to x is 2 plus 2 lambda, negative 2 plus 2 lambda, and 1 minus 4 lambda. Now we have to figure out what lambda value is going to give me a dot product here that is equal to 0. All right, so we need lambda such that angle AXB is equal to 90 degrees, which means that the cosine of the angle will be cos of 90 degrees, which is, which is 0. So we have to solve this simple dot product. This is x, and this is b, and this is a. So just as before, we need to have ax dot bx equals 0. right? And we've got magnitudes here, but we don't care about those, because they're going to be positive. Now let's look at what bx is. Where's x? Well, x is this general point on the line, right? So bx is ox minus ob, and you'll see that this simplifies really nicely. So o, ox is this. Now, look, this is a ton of work for this question, but in other A-level problems, this is just bread and butter stuff that you'll need to do. So it's worth going over it, I think, while we see it popping up here. This vector is going to simplify to just 2 lambda, 2 lambda, and negative 4 lambda. And now what I have to do is take the dot product, which is very simple. Right, so ax dot bx is equal to 2 plus 2 lambda, negative 2 plus 2 lambda, 1 minus 4 lambda dot this. And working that out is an easy dot product. I get 2 lambda into 2 plus 2 plus lambda, and so on. All right, so it's this times this, plus this times this, and so on. And now I'm going to solve for lambda. But I can divide both sides through by 2 lambda. Right? And I get 2 plus 2 lambda minus 2 plus 2 lambda minus 2 times 1 minus 4 lambda is equal to 0. When I clean all of that up, I get 4 lambda plus 8 lambda, so 12 lambda is equal to 2, and I finally get my value of lambda, which is 1 sixth. So now, here's my triangle. Here's x, and x has got a lambda value of 1 sixth, and here's a. Now, ax is equal to, from above, if you go back up the screen, ax is equal to 2 plus 2 lambda, negative 2 plus 2 lambda, and 1 minus 4 lambda. That cleans up to give me 7 thirds, negative 5 thirds, and 1 third. So finally, we can figure out the length of ax, and it's going to be equal to 49 over 9 plus 25 over 9 plus 1 ninth, which gives me root 75 on 3. I've got 45 seconds to do this. So the area is half times the base, which was 2 root 6, times root 75 over 3. And you get lots of nice cancelling out. Uh, root 6 times 5 root 3 over 3, which gives us the square root of 18 times 5 over root 3, which is 3 root 2 times 5 over 3, 
which is the same answer we got before five root two. Okay, um, I'll be amazed if anyone got to the end of that. Hopefully you had pen and paper with you. Thanks for watching.